A scale-up backup repository is an abstraction layer in between the backup job and your repositories to create a layer in between in case you have a dynamic environment where you have to make changes to your repositories, you may not have to make changes to the backup job. Now, this is only an option in Enterprise and Enterprise Plus. Some of the features that we can use for jobs and tasks are backup jobs, backup copy jobs, and even VeeamZip tasks. There are different policies as well, like data locality as well as performance to allow you to adjust how you want your data to be stored. Let's take a look at a demo. Veeam Scaleout Backup Repositories allow us to use multiple storage locations called extents and view them as a single repository in the Veeam Backup and Replication interface. This can greatly reduce the complexity of job management. Let's start by creating a Scaleout Backup Repository. The first thing we'll do is add our extents or repositories. We'll start by adding a regular backup repository. As we zoom in, we'll see we're adding a name but we're including at the end the word extent. This name extension will make this easier to find. Now we'll choose a location where it's going to store the data. Now we move to the repository section where we can browse. Once we select browse, we'll see a menu where we can then expand the server that we're looking at and go through to find the area in which we want to store this data. To confirm, we select OK. As this is a regular backup repository, this will have the same load control that you would have for any other backup repository. This includes limit maximum concurrent tasks and limit read and write data rates. We can also find additional options by selecting Advanced. The first two features include Align Backup File Data Blocks and if you use deduplication, decompress backup data blocks before storing. The one feature in this list that is not supported by Scaleout Backup Repositories is this repository is backed by rotated hard drives. That's because rotating media are not permitted to be used as extents in a Scaleout Backup Repository. The last feature in the list, Use Per VM Backup Files, allows us to split our backup files into one chain per virtual machine, which is seen right here. This works both at the extent level or on a scale-out backup repository as a whole, which we will see in a moment. Once you've selected the repository features we'd like to use, we can then move on to the mount server settings. This is where you can enable the vPower NFS service on the mount server. Then we go to Review and then Apply to create the storage location. This is also referred to as the extent. Once that's completed, then we can go and create a scale-out repository. We do this by right-clicking on Scale-Out Repository and selecting Add Scale-Out Repository from the menu. As we zoom in on the menu, we'll see this is where we give it its own unique name. The next step is to decide which extents will be added to the performance tier. This would typically be our on-prem storage. Now we click Add and select the extents that we created earlier. Once selected, we click OK, and now we can go down and take a look at the advanced settings that are down here in the bottom right. The first option, Use Per VM Backup Files, allows the use of all the extents in this scale-out repository. The second option will allow us to force an active full backup of the content we are requesting if an extent is offline. Once we've selected the options we want, we can then select OK and move on to the next menu. The next section we will be configuring will be the Placement Policy. The placement policy will define where the backup files will be located within the extents of your scale-out repository. Data locality will allow us to keep our chains of backup files together, like locating the full backups in the same extent as the incrementals. The performance placement policy allows us to split these backup files between different extents. This will spread the load across your configured storage locations. Once we select performance, then we'll be able to select customize. In this menu, we can see the two extents that we configured earlier. When we select either one of these extents, we'll be able to go to the Edit Properties section to be able to make additional changes. So, if I come up here and I select the first extent, which is called Extent 1, you'll see I select Edit, and now I can do Backup Files or just Incremental Files. In this example, we're going to choose Data Locality because some of our extents are using REFS. You will need to keep all of your data on the same extent if you want to take advantage of REFS's block clone capabilities. 
This would also be the preferred option if you plan on using deduplicated storage. Now we go to the bottom and select Next so we can now move on to the Capacity Tier configuration. The first option we see is Extend Scale-Up Backup Repository Capacity with Object Storage. Once my data is in a sealed chain, the backup files are no longer being merged because we've reached a selected operational window. We can now build some objects that can be sent to our object storage with the data from our backup files, while also keeping a subset on-prem for easy restore. We also have the option to encrypt data uploaded to object storage at the bottom of this menu as well. For the sake of this demonstration, we're going to uncheck the Extend Scale-Out Backup Repository Capacity with Object Storage option. It's something that we won't need for this example, so simply unselecting it will let us move on to the Apply option, and then we can move on to the Summary option. At this point, we'll see it's saving the Scale-Out Backup Repository. Once this process completes, we can select Finish, and it will show us the Scale-Out Repository has been created in the menu. Let's right-click on our new Scale-Out Repository and take a look at the Access Permissions option. If we have Beam agents writing data into this backup repository, we can select which user or users are allowed to access this Scale-Out Repository. We can also force the use of encryption on the backup files being saved to this Scale-Out Repository. If you do choose to use encryption, make sure you have a good recovery option in place, like the Manage Passwords option below. If we right-click again, we can see where we can set a location or even view properties as well. If we select the Scale-Out Repository on the left, we'll see the individual extents, which you can right-click and select Proxy Affinity. This feature will link the selected repositories to the proxies best located for writing data into it. We can also select Maintenance Mode or even Evacuate Backups when required. Now that the Scale-Out Backup Repository is configured, let's select Home to see more features. Now we can use Scale-Out Backup Repositories with Backup Jobs and Backup Copy Jobs. Let's right-click on a Backup Job and select Edit to get some more information. Once in the Edit menu, we'll be able to select Storage from the left. This will then allow us to go over and select Backup Repository, and in the drop-down we'll see the Scale-Out Backup Repository that we created called How to SOBR. Note that you only see the scale-out repository and not the individual extents. We've let Veeam take care of this through our configuration of this scale-out backup repository earlier. Let's leave this menu and cover a few more things. As we said earlier, scale-out backup repositories are supported with backup copy jobs. There are types of data that cannot be stored in scale-out repositories. The first is metadata for our replication jobs. That will need to be stored in a standalone backup repository. Additionally, a very important piece of data is the configuration backup files. If you go to the main menu in the upper left hand corner, you will see a drop down with the option to select configuration backup. They will need to be stored in a standalone backup repository as well. Thank you for watching this demonstration.